We're going virtual now, a little bit switching things up a little bit. So uh, um, just, to, just to remind you of the, the, the schedule change this afternoon, Ryan, uh, Ryan Pallas from uh, Novartis, obviously he moved in uh, yesterday afternoon to speak. So he will be, uh, so he's obviously completed um, as of yesterday, but uh, now last but not least, we're gonna have um, a virtual presentation from Siddharth Keshwari, um, the, who's in the biopharmaceutics group at Sanofi. Um, obviously, all of these sessions are going to be on demand, with, uh, the, uh, with the exception of a handful um, that we will share with you uh, beginning of next week, I should say. But uh, Sid's talk, he's, he obviously shares his apologies for not being able to be in person, but he's um, obviously pre he's presenting on using PBPK modeling for risk assessment in drug product development. So, um, and, and after Sid's talk, obviously, we'll be uh, concluding the summit for the, for the week. So, um, I know, my, Justin, if you want to pull up Sid's presentation, and we'll, we'll hop right in. Good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, thank you to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to share some of the unique work that we've done here at Sanofi U.S. Cambridge site. Uh, I'm part of the biopharmaceutics team uh, that covers uh, the breadth of activities from late stage research up until uh, late stage development, uh, encompassing all activities uh, related to uh, biopharmaceutics and drug product performance assessment. Unfortunately, due to some last minute uh, changes, I was unable to uh, present this in person, so I'm happy to deliver this talk virtually. Uh, the title of my presentation is Integrated Biopharmaceutics in Drug Product Development. I'll be covering two case studies, one on clinical plasma variability assessment and the second one being oral absorption risk assessment. The presentation have three distinct parts. A very brief, quick introduction on factors affecting oral absorption, uh, followed by uh, the first case study, which talks about Cinarizin, which is a weak-based molecule and how we use uh, in vitro assays coupled with gastro plus modeling to uh, identify the clinical plasma variability. Uh, uh, the second case study, it focuses on oral absorption risk assessment using a new approach called global sensitivity analysis uh, that guides the further in vitro assays to be performed in the lab coupled with an oral absorption model developed using GFP. Uh, specifically, this particular second case study, uh, we are one of the first ones to publish this, uh, and both these works have been published uh, uh, in APS Pharm SciTech and Pharmaceutical Research. Uh, please feel free to check them out uh, and reach out to us uh, if you have any questions uh, related to the study. With that being said, so factors affecting oral drug absorption and how, how can we study all of, all of them at once? So oral drug absorption is a complex process. Uh, it's influenced by you know, numerous factors that are either related to the drug substance, drug product, and or physiological factors. Some of the drug substance or API or molecular properties are uh, their structure and physchem properties. Material properties or formulation pro process properties that may be part of the drug product uh, include you know, formulation composition, excipient variability, process parameters, and so on and so forth. And physiological variables like age, gender, weight loss, uh, intra and intersubject variability. So there's, there's an, uh, a laundry list of other factors as well, uh, which influence your absorption. Uh, these factors, that is the factors from the drug substance, the drug product, or the physiological factors, they interact in a very complex nature. Uh, and studying all of these uh, in tandem requires a comprehensive approach that considers uh, the physiochemical properties of the drug, the drug product characteristics and the physiology uh, of the GI tract. Uh, so, unfortunately, there's not a, a single simulation package uh, that can study all of them in tandem uh, and, and, and they interact in a very complex nature. Uh, some of the state of the art simulation packages allow limited ability to understand uh, the influence of uh, each of these factors using one at a time approaches. But how can uh, we develop uh, you know, platforms or how can we study the combined influence of these properties and parameters, that is drug substance, drug product, or physiological uh, properties or parameters. Uh, one of the approaches is to perform a physiological-based biopharmaceutics modeling 
that takes into account not local sensitivity but a global sensitivity analysis and i'll talk about a little more details on what uh, local and global sensitivity is in the case study too that when i get there so uh, what we would like to do is to study the sensitivity of model outcome to variations in input parameters and uh, design uh, an efficient drug product by controlling the drug substance, drug product, process, uh, material properties to address variability in physiology for optimal clinical performance. With that being said, uh, how can our, our aim of both the studies is how uh, we can combine, uh, study the influence of these factors affecting oral absorption. So the first uh, talks about a unique molecule uh, called cinarizin. Uh, it's a weak base molecule. Uh, it's a BCS class two compound. And the first uh, section of this presentation focuses on this particular molecule where we demonstrate through an integrated biopharmaceutics approach, how we use uh, in vitro and in silico data to understand uh, clinical plasma profile variability. So the first set of uh, in vitro assays that we start with is, uh, we perform uh, shake flask uh, solubility assessment uh, for cinarazin in various uh, bile salt concentrations that is passive. Then we uh, move on to performing precipitation analysis uh, in various bile salt concentrations uh, uh, using pion microdisc profiler. Uh, and you may question why I study the precipitation profile and solubility at variable uh, bile salt concentrations. So literature reports as well as uh, an orbital study has shown that humans do not have a specific bile salt concentration but demonstrate a variable bile salt concentration depending on the age, gender, disease condition. So it becomes essential to understand the solubility and precipitation profile at variable bile salt concentration. Uh, unfortunately, with weak base molecules, as they transit from the stomach to the intestine, they have tendency to precipitate, uh, reducing the uh, exposure or performance of, of the drug product. So we start with these two assays in the lab. Uh, there is existing drug substance properties like aqueous solubility, uh, permeability, PK available for this molecule. Uh, we build an absorption model. Uh, there is human PK data available for an oral uh, 25 milligram tablet uh, drug product for cinarazin. So we gather uh, the human PK profile and parameters for the for that for this particular drug product and build a PK plus model in gastro plus. So the solubility and precipitation data that is generated in the lab coupled with the uh, human data and drug substance properties, we build uh, a gastro plus uh, model and hope to see a correlation with the plasma profile and oral absorption parameters and possibly identify which particular factors, either from drug substance, drug product, or physiology, may play a role in uh, the clinical variability that we see in, in case of cinarazin. We further go on and perform a population PK and sensitivity analysis uh, and see whether there is uh, in vitro, in silico, in vivo correlation or not. The intention here is uh, to demonstrate through a, a model compound whether these type of approaches can be integrated uh, in our work streams uh, as we see uh, weak base molecules in our pipeline. With that being said, as I said, cinarazin is a, a weak soluble, weak permeable molecule, uh, weak soluble, uh, let me correct myself, weakly soluble molecule BCS class 2B. Uh, so we started with uh, solubility estimation or determination of cinarazin using the shake flask method uh, in buffer uh, and different bile salt concentrations of PS 6.5. So there are four different uh, bile salt concentrations or passive versions, versions that we are using starting from 0.3 millimoles to 3 millimoles. Uh, and these ranges uh, are basically selected based on what has been reported in human uh, in clinical settings. We study the solubility for, at 4 and 24 hours uh, in both uh, a pH 6.5 buffer. It does not have any bile salt concentration as well as the other four different uh, bile salt concentrations. As you can see, we see a concentration dependent increase in the solubility of cinarazine uh, as the concentration of bile salt uh, increases uh, from 0.3 millimoles to 3 millimoles, approximately 3 to 10 folds uh, at both 4 and 24 hours. Unfortunately, as you may see, we are not able to determine the solubility at 4 hours for PL 6.5 but, uh, buffer because the solubility of cinarazine is very less uh, at 4 hours. So the key take home for us from this is cinarazine demonstrates an increase of 3 to 14 folds in solubility at 4 and 24 hours respectively in different bile salt concentration. 
move on and uh, study the precipitation profile of cinarazine. Uh, cinarazine is a weak base molecule. It has a tendency to precipitate as it uh, transits from stomach to the intestine. Uh, we use uh, a unique assay design. Uh, we start with cinarazine in pH 1.6 HCl. Uh, we infuse it using uh, infusion pump uh, at a predetermined uh, rate uh, and time uh, into either passive uh, media of different bile salt concentrations or buffer and study uh, in situ in real time the precipitation profile of cinarazine. Uh, so this is kind of a, a setup for our uh, routine precipitation analysis for weak base molecules. Uh, this particular uh, graph on the right demonstrates the results from the precipitation analysis. Uh, the red uh, red line uh, denotes the precipitation data in pH 6.5 buffer, and then the rest of the four colors denote uh, precipitation data at different bile salt concentration. Uh, what we study from uh, this is for facet with different bile salt concentrations, uh, a concentration dependent precip precipitation was observed with cinarazine. So these are the two lab-based activities, the shake plus solubility assay and the precipitation profile is what we start with in terms of lab uh, determinations. We want to build a gastro plus model using the drug substance properties, drug product information, as well as the human plasma and PK profile. Uh, these particular slide uh, here demonstrates the observed versus the simulated plasma profile that were uh, the outcome of a gastro plus model. Uh, after uh, numerous uh, optimizations. Uh, as we move from left through right, uh, they, uh, these graphs A, B, C, and D uh, demonstrate the observed in uh, data in squares and simulated data in line uh, for the fasted state uh, for a 25 milligram oral dose of cinarazine uh, based on the clinical study that was reported by the authors. So as you may see, uh, in the initial uh, or lower bile salt concentrations, when it is 0.3 millimoles and 0.6 millimoles respectively, we do not see a very good correlation uh, between the observed versus the simulated plasma profiles. But as we move on to uh, facet 0.5x or 1x, where the bile salt concentration is 1.5 and 3 millimoles respectively, we see a very good correlation between the observed versus the simulated plasma profile, uh, which tells us that for the lower concentrations of bile salts, uh, there is considerable lower plasma profile prediction. However, these are still within the observed uh, uh, mean plus or minus statistical deviation for, for the CMAX and AOC. Uh, unfortunately, the study that the authors reported did not uh, report individual patient uh, data. So we were not able to uh, specifically identify the reasons why uh, there was a poor correlation uh, at, lower plasma, uh, at lower bile salt concentration. Uh, but for FASIF 0.5 and 1x, uh, our AUC and CMAX obtained were very close to the mean profiles that were reported. We performed a parameter sensitivity analysis to possibly identify the factors that may play a crucial role in the observed clinical variability. Uh, this particular slide has four graphs, uh, A, B, C, and D, uh, which represents the influence on uh, either FA, CMAX, TMAX, AUC of various parameters that we studied. The parameters that were studied were precipitation time, solubility, permeability, particle radius, uh, stomach and duodenum pH. As you can see, the main key take home message here is for uh, the precipitation time has to be greater than 650 seconds for CMAX, uh, but not for AUC. Uh, and, it play, and it seemed to be a very crucial factor in, in affecting uh, the oral absorption, specifically for FA. There are other factors that you can draw a result from, but since we were studying the influence of solubility, uh, uh, since we are studying the influence of bile salts on solubility and precipitation uh, time, uh, precipitation, uh, this this particular becomes of uh, utmost importance to our analysis. Uh, uh, this particular slide then talks about uh, how the absorbed versus the simulated CMAX and AUC uh, perform both in case of single simulations and population. Uh, PK. So the first graph on the left is uh, the CMAX, uh, the one on the right is the AUC, uh, which reports both the observed and the predicted uh, precipitation profiles for different bile salt concentrations. The observed data uh, is uh, for single simulations is in black circles uh, and single simulations for the different 
predicted ones are also in black circles. The blue circles represents the data from population PK. And as you may see, that there is a very good correlation between the observed versus simulated CMAX, both for single and population PK, as well as uh, AUC, which particularly highlights that uh, the variability in the precipitation time and rate could be uh, a contributing factor to the observed variability in CMAX, but that's not the case, as you may see in the graph on the right, you see where they are almost uh, in the range of the mean reported values. Uh, the key take-home conclusions for us from this study is bile salts variability can influence solubility and precipitation rates, specifically for weak-based compounds. Uh, our GASOPLUS model uh, helped in uh, providing considerable correlation with the variability observed in plasma profiles and the CMAX. And the mechanistic modeling of these in vitro experiments was successful in predicting uh, clinical observed uh, plasma concentrations and bioperformance of synadesin. Uh, uh, as I said earlier, I, I did not provide a lot of introduction to this, uh, to this uh, presentation uh, content, but uh, there is a detailed introduction in, in the manuscript uh, which uh, may be of interest to the audience. Uh, please uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions on this part of the uh, presentation. So this this uh, this activity we have not only done with just synergy as a model compound, but we screen various other model compounds and uh, our own uh, assets, uh, and and we, we saw a similar result uh, pattern for weekly basic compounds. With that being said, my next point on the second key study, which is basically uh, the global sensitivity analysis to assess the overall absorption of weekly basic compounds. So before I move on to specifics of the presentation, I'm going to give an overview of what was actually done for this particular case study. Uh, normally in, in uh, physiologically based biopharmaceutics modeling, uh, local sensitivity analysis is a very common approach, uh, but global sensitivity analysis is uh, now seen uh, as an activity that is of uh, real importance in terms of understanding the impact of uh, uh, simultaneously of various factors. Uh, the work that we performed here uh, was on a tool uh, that is part of Siemens. Uh, it's called uh, GPROMS formulated products. Uh, this particular tool uh, is a unique tool which uh, combines drug substance, drug product, uh, dissolution modeling along with drug product performance. So basically provides an end-to-end -end, uh, mechanism for us to study the influence uh, of of uh, various drug substance, drug product uh, properties, parameters on drug product performance. Uh, this activity was taken in collaboration with Siemens. Uh, I'm happy to share that uh, Siemens is now using our model as a template uh, as well as case study for their other clients. This work was also performed as a part of uh, the system-based pharmaceuticals alliance. So what we do is we start or we use a model compound, dipyridamol. It's again a weak-based molecule. It's a favorite for anybody who works in the biopharmaceutics area. Uh, we identify or we, we select the drug substance, drug product properties, uh, and we perform a global sensitivity analysis, or it's also called global system analysis, to assess the sensitivity of oral absorption to the drug substance, drug product, or physiological parameters. Uh, from this exercise, we end up uh, with uh, basically the information that which of the drug substance, drug product properties and physiological parameters may play a crucial role in oral absorption uh, variability or may, pro may be prone to uh, risk for this particular molecule in uh, oral absorption. Unfortunately, uh, we have less flexibility in changing the physiology of physiological parameters, so how better we can optimize the drug substance drug product property is our intention. This exercise uh, we perform through a bottom-up approach but can also be performed prospectively uh, depending on, on the type of workflow that you may be using. So through our exercise of GSA, we identified that for dipyridamol, uh, again, the uh, weak base molecule, uh, the bile salt concentration and precipitation may be a, may play a crucial role uh, in in uh, clinical variability or may, may be prone, or this molecule may be prone for uh, risk of uh, oral absorption challenges, uh, so we start with shake flask method. Uh, it, the GSA exercise helps us design our solubility assay as well as the precipitation assay that we perform using pion uh, profiler in different bile concentration. 
uh, then uh, we build an integrated solubility precipitation oral absorption model so we we use the uh, gsa to perform uh, the identification of the parameters we then uh, move on to lab based assays that may uh, guide our uh, uh, modeling exercise or inputs for modeling we build a solubility model to estimate the log kbm uh, as well as a mechanistic precipitation model to estimate nucleation growth in the first case study we use gastro plus it has a different precipitation model uh, versus the, the gproms model uh, we we build the solubility and precipitation model and then couple that with the, the oral absorption uh, model and perform a pk calibration with the hope to predict the plasma profile and oral absorption parameters and explore the design space uh, by studying the api behavior under variable scenarios as well as to use uh, uh, this data to generate uh, in vitro assays or experiments to basically uh, guide the critical input parameters for modeling global sensitivity analysis or global system analysis uh, so uh, statistical analysis or sensitivity analysis is a very crucial aspect of physiologically based biopharmaceutics modeling. It's a technique which uh, is used to understand how changes in the input uh, parameters of a model may affect its responses or output. It helps us in assessing the robustness and reliability uh, of a model by identifying which parameters have the most significant impact on model predictions. Uh, there are two approaches broadly. One is called a local sensitivity analysis. The other one is a global sensitivity analysis. Uh, so in local sensitivity analysis, what happens is uh, it involves varying one input parameter uh, at a time while keeping other parameters constant. These are primarily used during model building and calibration uh, where there is uh, confidence in the model input. They identify input fa factors with the greatest influence on the model predictions uh, as we show in our first case study whereas in gsa it examines the sensitivity of the model outputs in the context of the multi-dimensional input space by accounting for the impact that input parameter values uh, have on resulting outcomes uh, and exploring model behavior uh, so this provides uh, a brief introduction of what local and global sensitivity analysis is uh, it also provides meaningful relationship between model input and variability in pharmacokinetic outputs and responses. So, uh, in case of GSA, the inputs are known as factors, the outputs are responses. It helps us uh, identify where the variability in the model is coming from. Is it from the drug substance properties, formulation of process parameters, from the physiology or from uh, measurement variance or model assumptions uh, and and GSA does this identification uh, of uncertainty in hundreds of thousands of simulations in a single activity uh, output or responses can be tailored to the uh, parameters of interest such as for oral absorption it can be fraction absorbed uh, AUC Cmax Tmax or dissolution criteria as well uh, thus, it provides uh, the potential to identify the likely source of variability and control the sensitive parameters uh, guiding the next sets of experiment design. So, we perform uh, using uh, GPROMS. Uh, it has the capability. The results from the GSA analysis are presented in the slide here. Uh, what we do is uh, the first exercise is we study the uh, total sensitivity indices or uh, total effect indices what it does is basically uh, through our through our input of the drug substance properties drug product characteristics and the uh, and the uh, and the physiological parameters uh, this particular graph here shows the sensitivity indices uh, which are a unitless uh, parameter uh, on uh, and the influence of the parameters on either FA, which is oral absorption, Cmax, and Tmax. The equation for the total effect indices that's built into the GPROMS is, is on the right here. Uh, so what it tells us is that uh, from the result, the nucleation constant and growth constant along with bile salts uh, can play as a uh, can act as a crucial factor uh, along with permeability in influencing the oral absorption. Uh, as uh, uh, so, uh, these are some of the uh, influential factors that that can be identified uh, from the GSA analysis. 
this second figure talks about the influence of nucleation kinetics which is built in uh, as a parameter uh, for precipitation in the g proms uh, oral absorption uh, in, the, in the g proms precipitation model so it's it's a uh, graph that has the nucleation kinetics on the x axis the oral fraction absorbed uh, on the y axis and and the growth free from uh, on the other axis so what it shows is the impact of the nucleation rate on the fraction absorbed uh, and there is a correlation between the magnitude of the nucleation rate and fraction absorbed uh, about 90% of the simulations allows for 75% absorption content but there are regions within the parameter space uh, with common values for nucleation that can yield considerable, considerable reduction in absorption typically for a nucleation rate greater than 12 uh, uh, and growth constant greater than uh, min minus 5 uh, then the fraction absorbed is uh, incomplete as, as shown in the results of the graph here. Uh, here talks about uh, the influence of uh, variable bile salt concentration on the fraction, fraction absorbed. Uh, there is a significant in, uh, impact of the bile salt concentration on the fraction, fraction absorbed as, as depicted here. This happens uh, when combined with one or more of the other three factors that were identified in the sensitivity indices. For bile salt concentrations, typically in the range of one to five millimoles, uh, that that was studied in our uh, lab assays as well. So uh, it has to be uh, bile salt concentration has a significant uh, uh, impact on the fraction absorbed, typically in the ranges of one to five and greater than five, uh, uh, sorry, less than uh, five millimoles as well. From the GSA uh, exercise, uh, what we identified that the precipitation kinetics and its level of or link to the level of bile salt concentration is an appealing path for further investigation, guiding the next set of uh, uh, lab based uh, assays or experiment design. Started with the solubility study again, as we did in our initial case study. So we performed a shake flask uh, uh, assay. For solubility study uh, of dipyridamol uh, at different bile salt concentration at 4 and 24 hours. In this case, we added an additional bile salt concentration of 5 millimoles based on the data that we got from uh, the GSA, specifically the graph uh, where the bile salt concentration influence or fraction absorbed was uh, shared. Uh, so we studied the solubility at 4 and 24 hours. Uh, as you see, uh, Dipyridamol demonstrates an increase of about 3 to 10 folds in solubility at 4 and 24 hours in bile salt concentrations. Uh, for us, uh, the 4 hour solubility is the kinetic solubility and the 24 hours is the equilibrium solubility. This is similar to the, to the one presented in the case study one. We study the precipitation profile of uh, dipyridamol using the same uh, assay design where we use an infusion pump to uh, infuse dipyridamol solution at a predetermined rate and volume into passive media or buffer and study the real time uh, concentration using a pion profiler. The graph on the right depicts the precipitation profile of dipyridamol at different bile salt concentrations or PS6.5 buffer and the results show that there is a concentration dependent uh, increase in the precipitation uh, based on the bile salt concentration. And it plays a crucial role in modulating the solubility as well as the precipitation kinetics uh, as shown in the previous uh, slide as well as in, 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 in this slide as well. Now, we have done the GSA where it helps help us identify the, the parameters uh, that we should keep uh, in, in context uh, as well as guide our next set of experiments. Then we perform the solubility and uh, precipitation analysis in the lab-based assays. Uh, we come back and, and build a solubility model of dipyridamol in G-PROMS. Uh, so this particular uh, slide talks about the solubility results or uh, uh, results from the solubility modeling of dipyridamol, uh, both using the shake flask method data at 24 hours uh, and the predicted solubility using the optimized log KBM parameter for different bile salt concentration. And as you can see, at uh, varying bile salt concentrations from 0.3 millimoles to 5 millimoles, uh, we see a very good correlation between the observed and model predicted solubility. So building the uh, solubility, precipitation and oral absorption model. This particular uh, slide talks about uh, the framework or, or a snapshot of the flow sheet 
uh, that goes into the design of the oral absorption model. So the first one, uh, the first tab, as you may see here, is where we add the product or API specification. Then uh, we add the tablet characteristics, basically the drug product information. It includes dosage, uh, dissolution, uh, first pass effect, and so on and so forth. The simulation duration is basically the data that we have for the human plasma profile. Then uh, we have the GI model, which is basically the oral absorption model and a two compartment PK in this case. Uh, then we perform a, a flow sheet simulation to see if, if the parameters that were added and the connections between various aspects of the model are correctly done or not. It's not a mandatory step, but if it done, if it done, it checks the quality of your model and the flow sheet. And finally, we perform the model calibration and validation. Uh, in this case, for a 200 milligram immediate release dipyridamon tablet. Uh, what I'm going to show is the precipitation and solubility integrated oral absorption model for the five different bile salt concentration. The first one being for 0.3 millimoles uh, bile salt concentration. So the first graph here is the precipitation model. The unique part with this tool is it provides you a, a very uh, mechanistic precipitation model. The concentration is on the y-axis, the time is on the x-axis, and we see a very good uh, uh, representation of the measured and the predicted values in micrograms per ml, coupled with the oral absorption model, uh, where we see the plasma concentration versus time for 24 uh, for 72 hour uh, profile. Uh, as you may see, uh, there is overestimation in the case of the predicted values in the orange as opposed to the measured values, which is also corroborated in the in the overall absorption. Uh, the observed values are in blue circles. The simulated data is in the line, uh, black line. We see a similar pattern uh, for the FASIP uh, with bile salt concentration of 0.6 millimoles. Uh, however, what we do is if we perform an appropriate solubility and precipitation evaluation and we model your absorption, we are able to fit the PK data for the mean PK profile. So these, these simulations are still within the mean PK profiles. Very good correlation of the precipitation uh, model uh, tied to the oral absorption model for the FASIP, uh, 1.5 millimoles. So very good correlation for the uh, precipitation profile with respect to the measured and the predicted values and the same. Uh, for the observed versus simulated uh, oral absorption uh, profiles in humans uh, for FASIP 1.5 and 3 millimoles as well as for uh, 5 millimoles uh, uh, bile salt concentration. And uh, when we perform the observed versus predicted PK parameters, we see that uh, uh, the values for the observed versus predicted Cmax and AUC are uh, within the average uh, ranges that were report, reported in the study uh, and are within the mean plus or minus stati statistical deviation for the observed CMAX and EOC. So, uh, key conclusions are uh, total sensitivity indices from GSA analysis helps us underscore the importance of considering precipitation kinetics and bile salt concentration effects. Uh, GSA helps us guide the experimental design to evaluate the most important uh, factors uh, with the potential to affect oral absorption. Uh, oral absorption model resulted in an accurate prediction of the plasma profile, uh, specifically for higher bile salt concentration. Uh, and uh, varying bile salt concentration influenced Cmax only to a limited extent. However, there was no effect on AUC. Uh, I thank you for your attention and time, and I thank you, the organizer, for this opportunity to share. The results from over two published manuscripts. Uh, happy to answer any questions or hear any thoughts and comments. Okay. Um, I apologize, there won't be any questions for Siddharth because that was actually due to be this morning, so we had to record and play it now. But he did kindly ask, though, that if you do have follow up questions, he'd love to obviously connect here, but sends his apologies for not being able to um, obviously be here in person. But Add him on LinkedIn. I know you've got his information on the program agenda there. He's happy to have follow-up questions with regards to his session details, and um, obviously we'll be sharing that with the on-demand talks as well. So he'd love to connect with you all. He just um, is, uh, was unfortunately unable to make it here uh, today in person. So um, just a couple of quick uh, announcements before we break up. I know that um, it's been a long two days. I want to thank you all for um, you know your perseverance. We got.